Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you this evening. We have been working on this fantastic Captain Fantastic pinball machine and the Brown Dirt Cowboy. I always want to say Dirt Brown Cowboy. And the Brown Dirt Cowboy based on his uh, album of the same name and his appearance in the movie The Wizard. It's a very collectible machine. We've been working through it and have done several videos on it. So if you haven't watched those yet, go back and check them out or you won't know where we're at. We're right in the middle of things here. But if you have watched all those videos here on our channel, then you are in luck because we're finally to the video where we actually fixed the thing. Now we've done a video where we showed the shape it was in when we got it and we worked through the mech board on the bottom. And then we did a video where we worked on the back box the lights behind the back glass, the back glass is in perfect shape, didn't have to work on it, and worked on the insert panel uh, with the score reels and all of that in the back box. So that was all cool. And we did one where we worked underneath the play field. There was all kinds of screwed up stuff under there. We got it all cool. And then we did one where we worked on the play field and we repainted part of it and all of that. And I think there might have even been another video in there somewhere. We've done several people. But we are now up to, we're going to fix it. So all of this time, it hasn't worked. When we first got it, we plugged it up and we tried to start it uh, just to see what the customer uh, would be dealing with on their end. And what happens is it resets the score reels and then it immediately goes to game over. It's been doing this for five videos now. And so as I cleaned everything, the score motor, the the... Score reels, all of the relays, the game over relay, all of that crap. Right? I never fixed it. I cleaned everything and kept kept messing with stuff, but I didn't try to look it up and figure out what the problem might be. So just, just by going through and cleaning everything, we did not rectify the problem. It's still got the same problem. So I'm gonna write, I'm gonna uh, show you exactly what it's doing. Um, everything's on zero because of the last time we did it, but let me let me add some uh, let me add some points here. There we go. Well, somehow it it rang three times, I think, but we only got 2,000 points. What's up with that? How'd that happen? So we might have to look into that. But here's what happens when you hit start, okay? So watch the scores reset. Watch it says first player. One player can play, will light up. Down here it might say ball one or something, and then it goes to game over. Oh, come on. Well, now we know our problem with why we only got it twice. The real hung. So that's our first problem. Okay, so the way it resets is there is a switch there on the stack. See the one that says 8 that you can see? It's not lined up like the other ones. That's the second reel. Uh, there is a switch there in the middle. The middle switch is the reset one. So I don't think it was quite how it ought to be. I don't think it was quite right. Let's try that again. All right. So it just shows you, even us people that have done it a few times, don't get it perfect the first time. All right. So the game over thing. So let's do it again. And you see what I'm saying? Just go straight into game over. We get some of our lights on the play field. Okay. Straight to game over. So that's our that's our main problem. That's what it's been doing all of this time. All right. So uh, I have a pad of paper here. We're going to write down what's wrong with it and then go through and fix it. There are a couple things that I already knew were wrong with it from earlier videos. So one is this flipper needs adjusted. It's just hanging a little bit. Flipper is hanging. Now this is uh, our paper from our buddy, Mr. Mingus, down the road here. He has a printing company. He prints paper stuff. He always brings us by extras. So we appreciate that. All right, so there's that. And then there is, uh, there is a wire down in the bottom that came out of the Jones plug. Jones plug wire. I need some kind of connector I can put on it. You could just solder it together, but I want to have some kind of connector where it can be removed. I'll show you that here in a little bit. Uh, and then there was a wire for the counter. 
right? And then another thing, if you didn't watch the previous videos, someone has hacked this baby. Look what they did. They cut the freaking stand-up switches for the kickers. They cut them short. And then they put three sets of freaking rings on it. They had rings all the way down to the on the on the play field. Just ridiculous. And so the only way to hit that switch and make the kicker work is if there was another ring down here that it would hit. So I've ordered four stand-up switches to replace that. So the four kicker switches. By the way, this isn't even our machine. This belongs to a customer. We're just fixing it for him. But I can't let crap like that roll. The kickers won't work. I could put extra rings on it, but that ain't right. That ain't how it's supposed to be. Come on now. So uh, let me think if there's anything else. Um, it's all that I'm aware of right now. There may be some other ones that I forgot, right? Um, but we're making our list. Okay, so we got to figure out this deal where it won't reset. So let's get the schematics out and see if we can figure out why it keeps going immediately in the game over. So our first clue, we are looking at the schematics. Her first clue, this is the light bulb, the game over light bulb. So when the game is sitting there, that light is on. Now, how does it get power? One side is connected to the transformer. Okay. The other side is connected to the game over relay. Right? And then through a fuse to the transformer. So basically, when this is tripped... The game over light is on. So what's happening is we start the game and that goes off. So what does that mean? It means the game over relay is going back this way. And then after it resets everything, trip it trips again and the game over light comes back on. Another thing that we figured out before is if after you hit start and it's still resetting, if you keep hitting the flipper button, eventually the flipper will flip. And then when it goes to game over, the flipper's dead again. So why, why are we even checking all that? It's because it's telling us that the problem is is that the game over relay is tripping, right? Which uh, ought to be obvious because, yeah, the game's over. <laughs> That's our problem. But we're making it simple here so I can track it down, and it's, it's super easy to figure out. So our problem is we need to figure out why is the game over relay tripping. So now we've went from why is a light bulb coming on to why is the game over relay acting up. Okay, so next on the schematics, we need to find out what makes this work. So here is the game over relay latch. This is a little bit trippy, pun intended, because there is a game over relay trip and a latch. Okay, so the latch is what happens at the beginning of the game, and then it trips to go into game over mode. Okay, so how does it latch? Well... This is, again, kind of complicated, but one side of the game over latch is tied uh, to the transformer. So it always gets power. So if we get power to the other side of it, it will latch. Right? So how does it get power? Through the reset relay. So when the game starts resetting, the reset relay comes on, and you see it resetting the scores and stuff comes over here, and as the score motor turns, it pulses it, blah, 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 right? And this is like how it gets the credits, uh, and then it holds itself on through this, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, okay? Um, so we know that's working because we see it going off, right? So the latch part is working, but... So when it latches, it, it physically holds itself in uh, on the play field. So what, one thing we need to do is go see if we can manually make it latch. So let's go try that. This is the game over relay. The, the game is on right now. So I'm going to hit this. Sparks are going to fly, and then it's going to trip again probably. Okay. So this is the trip, and this is the latch. So we're trying to get it to latch. I'm, the, I'm backwards. This is the trip, and this is the latch. So we're trying to get the latch and it immediately trips again. Okay, so let's turn off the machine. Okay. 
and with the machine off, it latches and stays. It actually literally latches, right? So the trip, what's going on is we're latching it, and then the tr this is energizing and instantly pulling it in. So it's an electronic problem, an electrical problem. It's not a, like a magnetic problem. Or you might, like if this plate was missing, this wouldn't latch. You could pull down on this and it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't stay in. So something is pulling this in after we do that. Okay. So it's definitely a switch somewhere, a shorted wire somewhere. One of these switches might even be it. It's something, it, it's not a uh, thing where it's incapable of holding itself on physically because it can do it fine whenever the power is off. But everything works great. It's something, uh, something telling it to do it. Okay, so here is the game over relay trip, and this trips every freaking time. Okay. Now how does it get power? Well, one side of it is tied to this line. This line gets power as long as the game over relay, um, how did we figure out that? That's if it's latched. So this can't have power until the game over relay latches, like it's doing. That. So again, the latch is holding it in. The, re the trip makes it go back to how it is now, right? So trip is game over. So it can't trip game over unless it's on. So once it trips game over, it moves this, and this is open. So this no longer gets power. But since it's a trip, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to hold power, okay? So when you hit the start button, that makes the reset relay do its thing. Okay? When the reset relay goes back to where it was, it puts power on all of these by connecting this line to the transformer, right? So that's normally closed on the reset relay. So when the reset relay pulls in, it loses all this. All this is turned off, okay? But then once it's done resetting, the reset relay turns off. When it does, it connects this switch back, which sends power up here, through the game over relay, which is now latched on, because we hit the start button. And so this has the ability to have power to it. It also energizes the out hole relay, the ball index relay, the tilt relay, the extra ball relay. As long as the tilt relay is not uh, pulled in, it energizes the target number two, the target number one, the gate relay, the targets down relay, the bonus unit step up, so step up solenoid, the 303 advanced relay, the 500 relay, blah, 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 blah on and on, the 100 point relay, all the relays, on and on and on, all right, all the way around here to even the flippers, okay, so, this, whenever, after everything resets, which it's doing, after everything resets, the reset relay drops out and connects that wire, and the game over relay is latched, so that's connected which means that this has the potential to work because this side is connected. So what makes the other side connect? Well, one way is if it's, so if we're just set on three ball or five ball, right? If we're on three ball, if this plug is on three ball, then when the ball count unit disc gets to ball number four, because you can't have four balls in a three ball game, so ball one, ball two, ball three, and then when it gets to four, it connects through this plug and kills the game and trips the game over relay. But it's doing it on, for us on ball one, like as soon as it starts, right? So if you were set on five, five balls per game, what would happen? Well, this would go to one, two, three, it'd start ball four, which would send power to here, but there's nothing connected to it. So you would have a ball four, and you would have a ball five. And then you would get to ball six, and it would connect and trip the game over relay. So it's as if we're at ball four or ball six. Right? So once that happens, 
it ends the game like we're getting now. Another way that it can get power is through a open switch on the coin relay. This is a possibility. It could be the coin relay has a stuck switch, but for that to work, you would also have to have one of these two, right? So the ball count unit zero switch would have to be closed. So what is a ball count unit zero switch? There's a ball count unit that keeps track of what ball you're on. So let's say you're up to ball number two. Well, then you're off zero, so this switch is closed. So what? Why, why is that like that? It's because, let's say we start a game, uh, and then I hit start again after I, after I uh, start a one-player game. Well, that will start a two-player game with other machinery, but they don't want it to trip the game over relay because the game's not over. You're just adding another player. So it will not trip this when the coin unit pulls in the second time you hit start. The coin unit pulls in when you hit start, but it will not trip this because the ball count unit is still at zero. When it's at, um, uh, I say zero, it's position zero, right? Uh, if that was up to ball number three or whatever, that would be closed, and so when you hit it, it would start a new game because you're not at the first ball. And also at the player up unit zero. So let's say you start a two-player game, and then the second player is playing. Well, then this switch will be closed, and when you hit the start button, it will reset it, start a new game, right? But that's probably not happening either, right? Because the coin relay shouldn't be coming in. What's probably happening is this lock relay. So what is this for? This is an interesting little switch. See how it's normally closed? When the game is off, that switch is closed. Why is that? It's so that if you stop a game in the middle of a game, like ball three or something, when you start the game back up, like when you turn the machine back on, that switch will be closed just because the relay is sitting there and hasn't pulled in yet. And with that switch closed, it will immediately pull in the game over relay. If that switch were to always stay closed, that relay would trip as soon as the reset relay fell out, fell out which is exactly what ours is doing. So uh, let me show you in the machine and then we can uh, we can go over it a little again just so that you make sure you catch what I'm talking about here. Okay, so here is the lock relay. See how it looks toasty? That's because it's on the whole time the machine is on. And see how it only has one switch? Its only purpose is to kick the game into game over if the lock relay should ever go off, like for instance when the power's off. So the power's off so the relay is not pulled in. As soon as I turn the power on, it will pull the relay in. But the relay, since it's off, that switch is closed. When you turn the game on, power can run through that switch as long as the reset relay is not pulled in, like we were just looking at, and it will trip that trip relay. Okay. So watch what happens when we turn it on. It immediately pulls in, and it stays in the whole time that the game's on. That's why it's toasty looking. But it is still working. Things get burnt looking like this. It doesn't mean anything. It just means they've been warm. That switch is separating, so that's working properly. Okay? So let me show you by looking over here. So let's say we're in the middle of ball two in a, in a regular game, if it was working right, and the game over relay hasn't tripped because it's not the end of the game. Okay? So we turn off the game. The next time we turn it on... The lock relay pulled in and tripped the game over relay that immediately threw us in the game over because that hadn't pulled in yet. Okay, So the good news is it looks like that's working just fine. But the bad news is that doesn't fix our problem. It could be that there is like a short on the wires back here or something. I'll have to look to make sure those aren't touching. Or sometimes you'll get a solder splash connecting to the two blades together. You know, we were looking at that over here in the earlier video. Um, but everything looks good. So I'll, I'll check on the schematics just to make sure those wires are fine. And if that's not it, we'll rule that out. Okay, folks, so we're at the same place. We're on that lock relay. And I've checked, and these wires here are not touching. The two blades, you know, the, the, the two sets of wires connecting to the switch. But check this out. With the game off, if I check between the two blades, continuity, 
it is shorted. And if I pull in the relay, it is still shorted. So it's as if the relay is not doing anything. So why would it do that? Well, like we said, it could be a short on the switch or something. I don't see one. Or it could be that uh, someone has disabled it in some way or something like that. Or it could be the way that the thing's wired. It's one of those other connections um, that we were looking at. But we've, we've figured out exactly why it's tripping. It's because it's basically wired to trip immediately. Uh, so something is shorted somewhere. So we, we continue to track it down. So basically we need to just look around until that no longer happens to where the lock relay, uh, whenever it opens, the resistance goes high. And oh, voila. So what we were just checking is this wire and this wire are shorted whether this switch is open or not. So anything on this wire would probably be what to look at because the yellow wire goes to a million things, right? So this green wire, it's green and red, it should only go to the ball count unit. Okay. It should go to the game over relay. It should go to the balls per game adjustment. It should go to the coin relay. So if you track that around and go everywhere that goes, you may find that it's shorted to the yellow wire at some point. Okay, folks. So using the multimeter, like I said, if you pull in the lock, it's still shorted because somewhere that green wire is shorted to yellow. And so we discovered it can do it there at the coin relay, at the three or five ball adjustment possibly, uh, at the game over relay itself maybe, and at the ball count unit, right? So I, I tracked the green wire and it comes over here to the coin relay. It's not shorted to, it comes in down here. It's not shorted to the yellow wire there. Everything looks good, no problems. Track it over here to the three and five ball selection plug. Everything looks good, no problem. Keep tracking, track it over here to the game over. Um, you know, remember that one part it has to run through here or something before it gets to it or something like that. I didn't see anything wrong. And then here's where the wire goes. And then there's one more wire. See how that's doubled up? So basically, if this wire gets shorted to yellow, it turns this on, right? So there's one more wire, runs all the way back, runs over here to the ball count unit. Everything looks cool, but just for giggles, I took the wire loose. So with the green and red wire no longer connected to the ball count unit, uh, when you check the lock relay, now whenever it pulls in, you get resistance between the two things. So whatever is shorting it to the yellow wire is on this ball count unit because if the green and red wire is no longer hooked to the ball count unit it, whenever the lock relay opens up it's no longer shorted like it should be okay so moving right along boy you're bright moving right along this wire is shorted to the yellow wire. It can do that through the ball count unit disc because if the ball count unit is up to ball six, for instance, if it's set on five ball, if it's up to ball six, this will be shorted to the yellow wire. Okay. If you remove this wire, this is no longer shorted to this when this switch opens. I'm trying to make it pedantic. I don't want to lose anybody. I don't want to lose one of you. Hope I didn't lose anybody, and the, all of you people that, that get it, take it easy on us slow folks, right? So if we're disconnected from the ball count unit, we no longer have a short when this opens, but we have a short when it's closed because it's supposed to be like that. Okay, so what does the ball count unit do? Well, it counts the balls, literally. So whenever you, so ball one, ball two, ball three, ball four, ball five in a five ball game, and then when it gets to ball six, there is no ball six. It's a five ball game. It shorts yellow to the green wire and kicks the game over relay, which is exactly what's going on right now, right? So why would that be doing it right now, okay? So this is the ball count unit disc. Remember earlier how we said the reset relay resets the coin unit, the game over latch, right? 
it also resets the ball count unit reset solenoid. So when the game resets, that should reset the ball count unit. So when it resets the ball count unit, this wiper will go from being at position 6 back to position 1 while everything else is resetting, right? So while the reset is resetting, this isn't closed, which means that the game over trip relay can't work. So until that gets back to 1, it could trip that if you weren't resetting. So at the end of the reset, trip it's tripping that because of something to do with the ball count unit. That's what we've figured out so far, right? So the ball count unit, if you look, that's where the green and red wire was. And notice there is a blade on it. That's because it's still at position 6. This is the reset coil. It can't reset because the wire was loose. So the wire connects down there and had broken off. So with this off, this can't reset. So what's going on is when the game resets, it's not able to reset this because it's not wired. So this can't reset and move that off of the ball six. So what should be happening is at the beginning, Whenever it's going clackety clack 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 clackety clack 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 and it's resetting all of the uh, score reels and it pulled in the game over uh, latch, it should pull this one in. And so when it would pull that in, it would have done that. Which would mean that you're no longer connected to the green wire because you're no longer on ball six. So now we're on ball one. Ball two, ball three, ball four, ball five, ball six. Okay, if you look, the wire is on that lug, but if you look in the schematics, this position and this position are connected together. Right? So our whole problem is wire broke on the ball count reset unit. And I didn't catch it when we went through it and cleaned everything in the bottom. But that's probably going to fix our uh, well, can't start a game problem. So let me uh, solder that back together. I'll put it up on ball six just to make sure that it's resetting properly. And uh, we'll see if that fixes it. All right, so I, I soldered the wire that I took off back on. And then I soldered the wire that either I broke or I think it must have already been broke because it's had this problem. You saw it from the very first day it came in. Soldered it back on. Uh, and then we've turned it back on. Let me go ahead and put some more points on it. Like we were trying to do the other day. Remember it wouldn't reset right? Notice I didn't hit the same relay as before. <laughs> Alright, so we got a couple points on there. And I left it up on, on position 6, okay? So we want it to reset the ball in play unit to 1. Reset the score to 0. And then stay in game mode. Here we go! Holy crap, I did it, Matt. I fixed it. Finally. Ah, oh, the flippers even flip. Holy crap. All right, so we got her to come up. Very cool. So there you go. But here's what I want to do. We got to check to make sure that lock relay is working right. So you can see exactly what I'm talking about. And after I've been saying it, I've told you how it works for 25 minutes now. You know, I, I talk a little slow. That's what makes my videos so great. Everybody knows it. Hold on a second. Let me answer the phone on camera. Joe's Video Games. Man, we don't, unfortunately. I haven't had one in a while. All right, good luck, man. All right, all right, bye. Guy was looking for a Game Boy Micro. You want to sell them yours, Matt? I'm good, thanks. All right. Matt's a jerk. You won't sell nobody his stuff. Okay, so what is the lock relay for? It's so if you're like me and you're in the middle of a game and you turn it off. Well, I'm going home, tired of drinking tonight, and then you come back the next day and you turn it on. Oh, snap! It's in game over mode. So you saw how that happened. 
It did that because of that lock relay, right? So let's try to reset it one more time. This time we don't have any, uh, we don't have any scores and the ball count unit is already still at position zero, the, the original position, because remember we never even, I never even shot the ball. So we haven't played up to ball two or anything. All right, so we're still in gameplay. Okay, so that was that problem. So you know what we need to do now? Mark it off the list. I never wrote it down. Yes, I can read that. Look, it says things to do. So let's see if we can start a four-player game. So you just hit start again. See how it says two people can play down there? Three. Four. Now, remember on the earlier video we were talking about that switch on the coin unit. It should uh, not allow you to start a five-player game. And it doesn't, so that's good. Perfect. All right, so we're four-player game. We're going to act like we shot the ball. And then we're going to score some points here. So what's this score? Ten points. So I'm going to see if we roll over to 100. We do. And the chimes are working too. Isn't that great? Okay, and then this says lit rollovers advanced bonus. So let's try that. So here's the bonus is on 1,000. I don't know if the top ones do. They don't. Oh, it's pretty cool. I think when you hit them, it turns these off or something. Yeah. So the top ones, turn those lights on. And it's doing something here. Or was it? Maybe not. Yeah, there we go. Hey, we got our pop bumper lights. I was worried. I was wondering about that. Um, I wonder if they're different values, if they're lit or not. Hey, let's find out. If they're lit, they're 100. If they're not lit, they're 10. If, wow, man, they were really getting, I mean, this is, the, remember, this is an electromechanical game, so watch how this works. They're not lit, you hit them, they light. You, but you only got 10 points. But now, every time you hit them, you get 100. But this one's not lit, if you hit it, you get 10 points, but then it lights. Very clever. All right, let's make sure this rolls over. It did. If you're, uh, if you don't like hearing clack noises, I can see Matt over there. He's already getting frustrated. You're going to hate this video because it's going to be binging and banging and belling and bonging for quite a while. Oh, it's the. Well, that explains how they did it. It's, it's not. It wig wags. I love that phrase, on the 10 point. So when you hit this, you score 10 points, but then the next time you hit it, you're scoring 100, so it doesn't do it. But if you hit the 10 again, very cool. All right, let's see what this one does. Awesome, 10, everything looks cool. All right, then we have these stand-up switches here. Oh, they're giving us 1,000. Rolling over well. Perfect. All right, everything from here up seems to be working fine. Oh, we gotta see. Three says opens gate when lit, but it's not lit. Okay, the gate is here. If that opens, it's easier to not lose your ball. Okay, uh, these say three bonus advance when lit. So we're at 7,000 right now. We were at seven. We went to nine and and we have a thousand. Hmm. Oh no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I was reading it wrong. We were at eight and now we're at eleven. I was reading it wrong. Okay, same here. Perfect. 
Okay, um, and then I also scored A and B when I went through those, which is A and B. Lighting A and B lights double bonus. So A and B are just marked as those rollovers up there. Okay, boy, everything's looking great. 300 and 3 bonus advance. It did give us the 3. Did it give us the 3 bonus advance? I didn't see. No, it didn't. 300, 3 bonus advance. Let's write that down. 303 bonus advance doesn't work. You know, I don't have to write doesn't work because if I'm writing it down, it doesn't work. I'm not going to write it down next time. 100. It's working. 100. You gave me two, but I think my finger was sticky. Okay, and then the kickers, uh, we talked about that earlier. We don't have the right switches on those yet. I guess I could hit one and just see if we get the points. So it is kicking, it just can't, um, it can't, the ball can't hit it because of where the switches are. Okay, uh, that leaves us with the drop targets. Let's try this again. So we're on 5,000. Not working. Okay. Um, I think the only thing we haven't messed with is the drops. So the targets score 500 each. All targets down score 3,000. All targets down when lit scores special. Okay. So this one should give me 500, then 3,000. So we should end up at 34, 840, 37, 840. Perfect. And now it says all targets down when lit scores special. This also says special when lit. So we are at two games, two credits. That did not give us anything. Oh, you know what? Well, wait a minute. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we should be able to score. Remember, we can't. They, they, they cut the wire on it. Or was it this one they did that on? Yeah, on this one, they've removed the wire so it doesn't subtract credits, but you should still get credits. The special may be set up for an extra ball, though, but it doesn't say same player shoots again. So the special isn't working. Special doesn't special. <laughs> I don't have to write that down. Oh, you know what? I did it again. <clears throat> this is working fine. We're at 15. You can't go any higher than that. I forgot about that. You can only get a 15,000 point bonus. So the reason that that's not working is because we're maxed out. So this one says extra ball when lit. Let's see if that works. Well, I hit the flipper. Same player shoots again. And then the dun 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 is you're getting 300 points and it's trying to give you three more bonuses, but it can't because it's at 15. There's only 15 positions on the bonus reel. It's a little clunky because you would think that it could keep going, but that's just how it's designed. Uh, so we're looking pretty good. Let me, well, we, can, we still need to test that just to make sure, but I believe that's right. Um... What else can we test? Oh, all targets down when lit score special. That probably won't do it. That bottom drop target doesn't drop very well. Okay, we're still on two credits. We did not win a free credit. Okay, so uh, we're getting there. Same player shoots again. Let's drop the ball out and see if it gives us double bonus. So we should get 30,000 points, and it should stay on player one, and it should stay on ball one. So 30,000, we should end up with 74,540. Still 
one player one. Still on ball one. Same player shoots again is turned off. Very cool. All right. So let's see if we get our three now. Perfect. I thought that seemed a little weird because whatever you have on a play field, something like up here, it gives you three bonus advance when lit. And then down here, it gives you three bonus advance when lit. It's the same thing. They just, they wire it the same. So it's very strange for one to work and one not to. All right, so we can mark that back off. But we need to write, write down the bottom drop target. Okay, so I've got flippers hanging, the Jones plug wire that we were thinking about, the wire for the counter, the four kicker switches that we're waiting on, the special doesn't work, and the bottom drop target is sticky. Okay, uh, and I need to walk through it all to make sure all four players play and check the other players' score reels and stuff like that. So I'll do that, and if I run into anything weird, that will come back. Okay, folks, it seems to play pretty good. Uh, this left pop bumper coil is real sluggish. Sometimes if you hit it dead on it, it doesn't even pop. Um, so we need to adjust that. But one thing that I noticed when we were working on it before is there are diodes on these two pop bumpers and no diode on that one. So I want to see if somebody's added those or if they had started using them uh, by 77 whenever this came out. So I don't know um, how it should be from the factory. So let's look in the schematics see if we can figure that out. Okay, yeah, so this is one of the ones with a bridge rectifier. So the co the um, pot bumpers and the right and left slingshots run on DC voltage. So there should be a diode on all three of the coils, so I need to add one onto that one. Um, center thumper bumper should have a diode. Right thumper bumper should have a diode. Left thumper bumper should have a diode. Here's the bridge rectifier. Okay, there's a cap as well. And wait, am I correct here? Yeah, the yeah. So the slings have them too, but the slings don't have diodes. All right, let me add a diode to it. Okay, folks, so in our first video, we found there was a wire broke in the Jones plug. So I have Matt here with me who is an engineer. Now, he's not an electrical engineer, so he's basically useless in this conversation. But we're going to act like I consulted an engineer. What do you think? That'll work. Okay. That's how it works everywhere. Okay, so that damn wire has a 15-amp fuse on it. All right. It burnt up the Jones plug because it just it's for the lights in the back box. Okay. A lot of little light bulbs. Okay. Now, I actually lowered the amperage by 40% because I replaced all the light bulbs, the actual draw at least. You with know. LEDs? No, I replaced them with uh, dimmer bulbs. Gotcha. So instead of 47s or 44s. No, instead of 44s or 47s. Okay. So I have a wire that has burnt up the Jones plug, and I can't replace repair the Jones plug without replacing the whole thing. Okay. okay, so I'm going to put a little connector on it so that it can be removable like the Jones plug. So they'll have to remove the Jones plug and a little plastic connector, Molex connector. All right. Okay. I have the Molex connectors right here. They are series 1545, and they have two circuits. The safety agency ratings, 15 amp, according to the CSA. And you said that is who? Uh, that is some Canadian standards agency, I think. I'm not 100%. He thinks it's the Canadians. We love the Canadians, by the way. Don't take that as a slur if that is Canada. Okay, so that's the safety ratings, but this is the Molex rated voltage. It can hold 12 amps. Okay, it's got a 15 amp fuse in the cabinet. So my theory is, is that it's running at 12 amps or probably, or maybe even less, or they wouldn't have put a 15 amp fuse, they would have put a larger fuse. So like if it was running at 15 amps, it would probably have a 20 amp fuse in it. Right. That's what you think? Yeah, about 20% about overhead is what you want. I think I've heard that before. So uh, 
I think so. They're saying that you can run 12 through these Molex connectors. It's got a 15 amp fuse in it. I don't really know what amperage it's got on it. I don't have an amp meter. I guess I do, but I don't feel like messing with it. <laughs> so I think we're good. That's yeah, 40%, no, 30% overhead, yeah. Yeah, so I think we're good, people. Well, if that's what it is, well, we don't know. It might be. We don't know what the amperage is at. It, well, I'm saying if it is if it is 12 amps, 15 would be 30% overhead. So. Oh, okay. So you're saying that we're probably running at 13 if they designed it right. Right. But they wouldn't have used a, a uh, 14. They they wouldn't have used a 14 amp fuse. And that's also, too, that's the absolute max rating. So that's like when all the lights are on. That's true. So, so I think we're in the ballpark here, people. So I think I'm good to use this little Molex connector to connect that wire. So we'll do that. So here's the meter. They had a wire added to it. They had cut this wire so that the meter didn't work when it usually does. And I had added a wire to it with a diode on it. Completely unnecessary, especially since we're on free play now. Uh, so I removed that. But those two wires were why you couldn't unplug the thing. So now you can. I put the little connector in there. So now you can take it out, completely unplug it, and remove it. You got to take the Jones plug loose and that connector loose. Nah. Usually you don't have to take that out anyway, but I just hated that it was permanently taped together. So now they can remove it. All right, so uh, we can mark those off of our list. I added the diode too on that one. And on this pop bumper, uh, I adjusted the switch closer. So hopefully those will play a little better. We'll try it out here in a minute. All right, so next up we are working on the special that doesn't work. So there are... Uh, the easiest way to test it is this bottom left thing, whenever you hit it, it's scoring points, but it's not giving you same player can shoot again. I, ch I checked the setting. It's set on same player can shoot again, which makes sense because in a home game, you don't really want to win a free game. They're all free, but it's better if you win a free ball, right? Um, so we've got the special set on a free ball, and it's not working. And so if you look, there are two switches that it hits whenever it goes down. Okay, this one gives it the points. That top one is the one that should give it the special, and it's not doing anything. Okay, so if you look in the schematic, left bottom lane switch, right? That's this switch. So when it closes, it should send power from here up through here through the target number two sequence relay. Now the target number two sequence relay means all the targets have been knocked down. And if you remember, whenever we messed with that, you knock all the targets down and then it, they come back up and it has lit that, right? And there's different settings you can do if it's set on liberal or conservative, just depending on how, off, how easy they want to make it for you to win the special. Uh, but that one is also the one that lights the light. Okay, so... Uh, bottom special lane is turned on by the target number two sequence relay. So that relay is in right now. That's why that light is on. Okay, but it could be that switch is off. Maybe. But if that was true, then this switch would be the only one that didn't give us the special. But remember, the drop targets also didn't give us the special. Right? Uh, so we got that. Then it comes up. Goes through that. And then it goes through this connection we've got it set over here on liberal so it's just connected straight through so you don't have to use the alternate if it's on conservative the alternator relay will jog it back and forth right but it's connected straight through over to here right and when the other one makes the thousand point relay come on it makes this stuff work right it connects over to here it connects over to here and then I didn't write this on the schematics by the way somebody else did it it should connect through a game over relay, a normally connected switch here, right, to this little jumper. And then this jumper is over here on extra ball. Okay. And then extra ball should connect to this one, which goes over and does a bunch of stuff. So basically that switch is disconnected if this switch is screwed up. So on the game over relay, there is a switch with a 
red and green wire on one side that connects to 43 on the legend here says green and yellow wire and then on the other side it is a 31 which is a yellow and red wire so green and red wire and a yellow red wire with a green wire in the middle blah 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 or red and green wire so that switch if that's not connected right now it'll never work and sure enough sure as you're born It's again on the game over relay. Let's see if I can get a light on it where you can see it pretty good. It might be too much. You may be able to see it too well. This switch, boy, I hope I don't get electroshocked. This switch right here should be close look at the contacts up at the end of it see how they're moving it's because it's not actually connected so I gotta bend that a little bit get it a little bit better and we'll test it all right we're gonna try it again they're lit same player shoots again oh it's working but let's try it again to make sure that the drop targets are working Okay, so we're going to go back through. I figured out the... Okay, so let's see if it does it. Same player shoots again when we get all the drop targets down. And I figured out part of the problem is this isn't falling, especially if it uh, if the table's up. You know, so you need a little bit of gravity to make that fall. So I'm going to oil some of this. Okay. You see how the one drop target just didn't give me points? It's because I dropped it before the score motor had gotten back to where it was supposed to be. Okay, so on the fifth one, we should get that. Bam! Same player shoots again, baby! Okay, so we fixed the special. Okay, so one of the flippers is hanging a little bit. It's just a little bit too low. See that? A little bit of play in it, but even if you adjust it up, it won't really, you can't get it to adjust in just the, if it's just off a little bit and it's been like that a long time, sometimes it's hard to get it to adjust just a little tiny bit. So I'm going to show you a way you can overcome that. So I'm going to take this flipper bat off and I'm going to take that flipper bat off. Okay, so whenever these things get a little old, you can buy new ones if you'd like. These are the original ones. But they get a little, there's a set screw that holds them in place. And what happens is you get this groove worn into the thing like that from the set screw in the side of the paw. Okay. So your problem is whenever you go to tighten it up, what happens is the set screw wants to go right back in the same spot it originally was. So if you put it, if you try to put it just a little bit off, it just goes clunk and falls right back where it's supposed to go. And you can adjust it a hundred times and it'll land on the exact same spot every time. So what you can do is, if you take the one from the other side, it won't have the same, it, I mean, it'll, it'll have an indention, but it'll have it from the other side. So whenever you go to tighten it up, it won't land in the same spot and you can adjust it how you want. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to swap the two and uh, put it all back together and see if I can get it adjusted a little bit better. And uh, there's different theories about where you want to adjust the flippers. Just adjust them how you like them, okay? Okay, so let me show you what I'm talking about with the flippers, all right? The flippers are, there's two ways of aligning the flippers. Now, originally, if you look on the flyers, the flippers were a little bit, we'll call them droopy on the older games. So there is a little dot, right? And you kinda, you're supposed to make it where the end of the flipper lines up with the dot or whatever. The center of it points at the dot. I don't really like doing them that way. I always make mine just a little bit higher because I like lining them up with the end lane. So basically if the ball rolls off here onto the flipper in a straight line, you got a really nice shot. But on the older games in particular, they would make it where it was slightly, if you look on the flyers, instead of it being straight like that, it'll hang a little bit. 
So the ball rolls off and then kind of rolls down the flipper. Drives me crazy. I don't really like it. But that's technically how it's supposed to be set up. So you can set yours up however you want, but I always make mine a little bit higher. You, you don't lose the ball in the middle quite as much because the flippers, if they're higher, they're actually, actually a little bit closer. Um, on a game like this where you've got a scissor, so basically when you hit the left flipper, both of these go up, which creates a hole there that you can lose the ball through. We call it scissoring it. So you kind of, it messes with that a little bit because I've got the angle of this one up too, right? But it's all personal preference, people. Just do it the way you want to do it, all right? That's how I do it, though. Okay, so uh, we got rid of the flipper drag. Um, I think maybe we play it a little bit. Oh, another thing. If, you're, if you are installing these, make sure that you leave them where you can pull up on them a little bit. Basically, if they're, if they're too tight to the play field, they'll drag on the bushing when it tries to uh, kick the flipper, and it'll, you'll lose a little bit of power. So you want them a little bit loose up and down through the play field. Just a little bit. Just so you know, whenever it pulls in, it has a little bit of wobble room. It won't hurt your power. Um, the, bush, the, uh, the flipper, uh, the links that I was showing you, if they're worn out, it'll hurt your power. But that's how we're going to leave them. I like it. That's much better than how they were before. They were, they were just too droopy. All right, so uh, let's look at the list. I think we may have just finished everything. All right, the flipper is hanging. We fixed that. The Jones plug wire. We fixed that. The wire for the counter. We fixed that. We're waiting on our four kicker switches, but I think we can play it without those. Okay. Uh, the three hundred and three bonus thing, we, we figured out that wasn't a problem. The special didn't work, we fixed that. The bottom drop target, I fixed that. They needed oiled, basically. Um, so, uh, I think we're about ready to play it. We can test it out a little bit and see if anything else pops up. Uh, and we're waiting on the four stand-up switches for the kickers. Joe's test playing it for us. What do you think, Joe? Works great. Works great, he says. Boy, it's noisy with the glass off. It's the only way to get high score. He cheats, people. He cheats. All right, leave your comments below. We'll do another video where we play it and uh, look over the rules and all that stuff. But uh, I think we got it fixed. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it. Oh, I put the switches in for the kickers, too. Make sure to uh, give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film it. I thought it was going to uh, eject the ball. Oh, you jumped it. Nope, you got it. Same player shoots again. <laughs> folks so let us know what you think and uh, I hope you enjoyed us fixing it up we'll see you on the next video we'll uh, we'll do a longer video where we play through it you can see a little more of the gameplay but uh, we'll see you on the next one